Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean E, and in today's video, we'll be going over how to find the equation of a parabola given the focus and the directrix of that parabola. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those requests, so please do keep them coming down in the comments below. You can see I'm breaking out my thin pencil stroke uh, for this lesson because there's going to be a bit of algebra involved. So here we go. We've got our parabola here. Hope you can't hear the rain in the background too much. So just as a quick refresh, a definition of parabola is the set of all points equidistant to some given point called the focus and some given line called the directrix. And knowing that information, we can find the equation for a parabola given the focus and the directrix of that parabola. I want to point out that the directrix we're using in this example is just a constant line y equals d. You could have a directrix like that, but that's a lot messier. We're not talking about that in this lesson. So the idea is that we want to find a general equation y equals some junk so that if we're given a focus, a, b, and a directrix, y equals d, we can just plug this information into the equation and have a new specific equation for the parabola that has the given focus and the given directrix. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to find a general equation. So once we've got this equation, you can use it to find a parabola anytime you're given the focus and a directrix of this form, y equals d. So with that said, let's get into it. So remember, we're trying to find an equation that represents all the points on this parabola. So a first natural place to start is let's take a generic point on the parabola right there. And we'll say that this point is x, y. Pretty natural choice. So remember what I said earlier, that any point on the parabola has the property that its distance to the focus is the same as its distance to the directrix. And that's all the information that we need in order to craft this equation. Because since we know these two line segments have to be equal, that's enough information to set up an equality and then solve for y and have our equation. So we need an equation of the form the length of this line segment is equal to the length of that line segment. So we just have to find the lengths of the line segments. Well, this first one here is pretty easy. The length of that is just the change in y from the directrix up to this point, because there is no change in the x-coordinate from here to here. So it's just the vertical change. So the length of that line segment is y minus d. That's the vertical change from the point to the directrix. So now, writing in the top right, we've got y minus d equals. And we know that y minus d, the length of this first line segment here, is equal to the length of this second line segment. So now we need the length of that line segment. Well, all we need for that is the distance formula, which is really just the same as the Pythagorean theorem if we were to construct a right triangle there. So the distance formula, which is just the Pythagorean theorem, tells us that the distance from the point xy to the point ab is the square root of the square of the difference of the x values plus the square of the difference of the y values. So we've got x minus a squared. That's the change in x values from one point to the focus. And then we've got y minus b squared, which is the change in y values from the point to the focus. And then, of course, we just take the square root of that, as the distance formula says, which again follows directly from the Pythagorean theorem. So remember that this expression here is the length of this line segment, and we know that line segment is equal in length to that line segment. So I've gone ahead and I've written the expression up here in the equality. Now let's erase this, and here we've got the equation we're going to need to work with. y minus d, which is the length of this line segment here, equal to the square root of blah de blah de blah that's the length of that line segment there. And again, we know they're equal because of the properties of the focus and directrix of a parabola. Any point on the parabola is as far away from the focus as it is from the directrix. All right, so now we're going to take this expression over to a new page so that we can start doing some serious algebra. For starters, let's square both sides to get rid of the radical. So we have y minus d all squared, because remember we have to square the entirety of the left side of the equation. 
and that's equal to just getting rid of the radical x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. Now remember, we want to get y by itself because we just want to be able to plug in x values to get out y values. So we're going to go ahead and expand these terms that have the y in them, and hopefully we'll be able to solve. So expanding this term on the left, we've got y squared minus 2yd plus d squared, and we know that's equal to x minus a squared plus y squared minus 2yb and plus b squared. All right, so now we got something good going on here because we've got a y squared on both sides. Of course, we don't want a y squared, so this works out well. We can subtract a y squared from both sides, and now we're left with negative 2yd plus d squared is equal to x minus a squared uh, minus 2yb plus b squared. All right. So again, remember, we're trying to get y by itself, so what we'll do is subtract this d squared over to the other side, and we'll add this 2yb over to the other side. So we get negative 2yd, remember we subtracted the d squared, and we added the 2yb. So we'll add the 2yb now, and then equal to x minus a squared, we don't have to write the minus 2yb because we added it to both sides, so we have plus b squared, and then minus the d squared that we subtracted from both sides. All right, we're getting closer. So looking on the left side of the equation here, you see we've got a 2y in both of these terms. So let's go ahead and factor those out. So we've got 2y multiplied by negative d plus b, and that is equal to x minus a squared plus b squared minus d squared. And now I'm just going to go ahead and flip this negative d and b around just so it looks a little bit more natural. And of course it's the same quantity, so that's fine. So we've got b minus d. All right, now you see on the left side of the equation, all we've got besides y is 2 and b minus d. So to get rid of those, we just have to divide both sides of the equation by 2 times b minus d. All right, so now we've got y all by itself on the left side of the equation. That's a dream come true. That's equal to x minus a squared divided by 2 times b minus d plus b squared minus d squared. And of course, that's also divided by 2 times b minus d. Now we can still simplify a little bit. If you look right here, you see we've got b squared minus d squared. That's a difference of two squares, which has a very formulaic factorization. Writing over here on the bottom right, we know that b squared minus d squared is equal to b plus d multiplied by b minus d. So we're gonna go ahead and do a substitution here. We'll take out the b squared minus d squared, just erase that and then we'll move in the b plus d times b minus d. Let me go ahead and shrink that so it fits a little more nicely. All right, and now the reason we did that, of course, is because now we've got a b minus d in the numerator and the denominator, so those cancel out. All right, so now this is what we're left with, and I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it just slightly differently so that we've got a coefficient in front of the x minus a squared term. All right, so here's the equation as you just saw it on that last page, and then I just moved a little bit of stuff around here to make it a little easier on the eyes, in my opinion. So then this is it. This is the general equation for a parabola, given the focus of that parabola, a, b, and a directrix of the form y equals d, where d is a constant. So then if you have this information, you just plug that x value of the focus into where it goes, plug that y value of the focus into where it goes, those are the b values, and then plug that directrix value right in to those d values, and then you'll have the equation for the parabola that has, let me get my yellow highlighter here, that has this focus and this directrix. It's really pretty snazzy. And of course, once you plug in those values, this equation will look a good deal simpler because you won't have all these variables hanging around. So one more thing before we go, check out this equation here. You might be wondering, what is this equation? Well, it's just this equation, but I rewrote it in a form that might be more familiar with regards to quadratic equations, because we've got a constant coefficient in front of x squared, a constant coefficient in front of x, and then we just add on a constant there at the end. 
So I figured some people might be curious, this is what it looks like in that more familiar um, quadratic equation form. But you can of course tell that it looks a good deal nastier. So if you're actually going to use the equation, you should probably just use this form here. But that's really all there is to it. So if you've got a focus and a directrix of a parabola, all you've got to do is plug that information into this equation and you're off to the races. You've got your equation now for the parabola that has that given focus and that given directrix. I'll probably do a couple examples of that in a different lesson and maybe even show you some graphs and stuff that'll be real cool, but we'll save that for another day. So I hope this video helped you understand how to find the equation of a parabola from the focus and directrix. Of course, you never have to derive the formula again. Here it is. You can just go ahead and use it, but now you know exactly where it comes from. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other lesson requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait for my